In front of the Rutan building stood Greenville's first schoolhouse. The education of children was important to the early pioneers who built a log schoolhouse in 1845 at the center of what would become Lafayette Street. Twenty-five children attended that year, six of whom were Indians. That structure was replaced three years later by a two-story, two-room red schoolhouse on the northwest corner of Lafayette and Cass Streets. Student enrollment increased, demanding a larger four-room school which was built several blocks to the west on Cass Street. This one lasted until 1901 when it was replaced by a red brick building. It later became the city library, then school administration offices, and now a glider museum. Other schools built in the 1800s were the North Ward School on Gibson Street and the Clay Street School. The latter is still in use as a VFW hall. The need for a high school became apparent, so the Union High School was erected in 1868-69 at the south end of Franklin Street. It was the first brick building in the recently chartered village of Greenville. Unfortunately, it was gutted by a fire in 1911 and a new school was built on the same site. A new school was built on Hillcrest Street and this one was torn down in 1977. The Flat River Community Library now occupies this site. Circuit riding ministers held early religious services in the Red Schoolhouse. The Methodists were the first to formally organize a congregation in 1851 and built their own church the same year. It was replaced in 1872 by a much larger structure which was destroyed by an arsonist in 1951. A new church was built at the same location on the corner of Cass and Franklin. The Congregational Society organized in 1852 and met Sunday afternoons in the Methodist church until they built their own in 1856. This building was sold to the Episcopalians in 1879 and moved from the northwest corner of Cass and Clay to the other side of Cass. The two congregations shared the building until the new congregational church was completed. The Baptists organized in 1853 and built a church in 1865 on the corner of West Washington and Franklin. St. Charles Catholic Congregation was organized in 1859 and they built their first church on East Washington Street in 1877. The Episcopal and Baptist Church buildings are the only original buildings still in use. In 1853, John Green platted his land west of Lafayette Street, while Manning Rutan platted his land east of the street. Most of the homes in the beginning were built to the west of Lafayette, becoming the commercial district. By 1860, bridges were built across the river at the north end of the street and on East Washington Street. Earlier, the only way to cross the river was over the two dams. This is the first known photo of Lafayette Street taken about 1867 when Green Settlement became a chartered village. Among the first acts of the new government was to order plank walks built across the muddy main streets intersection which the men in the foreground are doing. The second floor of the gabled building in the center of the photo served as the council chambers until a combination fire city hall was built in 1872. It was enlarged in 1905 when the Victorian facade was replaced with a colonial style architecture to match that of the new addition. This building was torn down in 1985 after the adjacent city hall and public safety buildings were built. This 1875 view of Main Street shows a mixture of wood and brick structures. The Fargo Belknap block on the far right was the first brick commercial building in the city built in 1869. A devastating fire in 1887 burned all the frame buildings to the north almost to Cass Street where it was stopped by another brick building. Flying sparks then ignited the Phelps Hotel across the street, which is the second building from the left. Water stored in the large cisterns at each street corner proved inadequate to put out the blaze. As a result, the city council decided it was time to construct a community waterworks. The hotel was soon replaced by a modern brick one as were the buildings on the east side of the street, as seen in this 1948 picture. Greenville's first hospital was established by Dr. Belknap on the second floor of the Fargo Belknap block in 1905. The hospital was moved to the former F. O. Lindquist home on Berry Street in 1915. When the baby boom occurred in the 1950s, a new hospital was built on the west edge of town to ease the space crunch. Here are some early Greenville homes built for prominent businessmen which are still in use. 
The home of banker A.J. Ecker was built in 1876 at 615 South Lafayette. It presently contains several apartments. Cass T. Wright had his home built on the southwest corner of South Lafayette and South Streets in 1890. He was part owner of the Greenville Implement Company and raised several record-setting horses on what was then a farm. A longtime druggist, Charles W. Passage, had this Victorian-style house built at 200 South Franklin in 1896. It has been used as a doctor's office for many years. William D. Johnson, a lumberman, was the first owner of this house at 121 South Franklin. Bert Silver, a showman and owner of the Silver Theater, was the next longtime owner. The house was built in 1879 and now contains residential apartments. This brick house on the corner of West Washington and Lincoln Streets has been the least chain since it was built for Rufus F. Sprague in 1886. Mr. Sprague was an industrialist involved in several local enterprises. The present Marshall Funeral Home at 418 West Grove originally was the home of Thomas B. Winter, built in 1896. Winter was the owner of the Winter Inn at the corner of Lafayette and East Grove. The restored inn is the third hotel on the site, the previous two having burned down. Lumberman J. E. Oliver had a horse breeding farm at 737 East Fair Plains. He had this farmhouse built in 1890. It is now an apartment house. The city of Greenville not only has the flat river flowing through it, it also has three lakes at its southwest corner. The largest is Baldwin Lake, which is a little unusual in that it has a road circumventing its shoreline. Because of the high ridge surrounding the lake, the water level was lowered several feet in order to build up the road. The lake became a popular summer resort, with bathing and dance pavilions attracting visitors. Mir Lake, adjacent Mondoka Lake, was originally named Fatal Lake. The original name was due to a legend of an Indian maiden, Mandoka, drowned while trying to save her sweetheart. The lake's name was changed to romanticize the legend. Como Lake was outside the city, but has since been annexed into the city. The Flat River, once vital to the industrial economy of Greenville, has returned to a more serene state and a place of beauty. <laughs>